Colin, your great grandfather established the winery. Do you have a lot of fond memories growing up here? Uh, we certainly do. Uh, I was lucky enough to um, work with uh, one of the guys uh, at Corridor. Right, and, uh, so you've worked for other wineries as well as your own family. I wine. did at that stage, yeah. yeah. It was just great because he was a fantastic guy. There were only nine people, nine students, mm. came out every two years. Oh, really? So at that time when I came home, the offers of jobs were enormous. Yeah, you're um, a man in demand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so a lot of vines were growing in this area. Mm -hmm. In fact, this, this area, uh, it became the biggest, second biggest wine producing area in Australia. This is the old heart and soul of the winery. Wow. Um, because these wine casks here are probably 140 years old. Wow. And still going strong. Yep, yeah, and there's wine in it still in these barrels and we still use them and provided we keep the wine in them mm. and they don't get dry, mm. dry out the barrels, mm -hmm. they'll just keep provided to go after them, they'll just sit forever. Really? Yeah. Wow. So what's your oldest vintage right now in these barrels? Well, it's uh, pretty diff difficult because most of our wines are made in a Put through a uh, what we call a cellular process, mm -hmm. uh, so we blend the, the different blendages together. Right. Now, yeah, if you look at a wine that uh, probably the oldest wine in the wine, in the wine, I'm sure there are bits and pieces here that probably mm -hmm. got 50 years or something like that. Wow. Well, now, what makes your wine so special? And I think that the soil's got a lot to do with it. Mm. It's the vines, the cuttings that were brought out from France mm -hmm. after. They got wiped out with phylloxera mm -hmm. and killed all our vines mm -hmm. in the, the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they are quite unique now, these musket vines, right. because because you have phylloxera, yep. if you, you're not allowed to take any cuttings or any wood from it right. out of the area. Yes, yep. So they're quite, uh, they're locked up basically. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's how that came about. Yeah. We well, you know there's a few 99-point wines in the Halliday Companion. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and what happens is that we have to be very careful, and mm -hmm. this is what started the Musket of Rutherglen group. Mm -hmm. We believe that, that it would, because uh, we thought they would just go to, out to oblivion. Yeah. And people, but only people that would, only people that, that would drink them would be people who knew about these special mm -hmm. old wines. Mm -hmm. And um, so we rejuvenated that and we brought in a classification system mm -hmm. and um, it's just growing from, growing from there. Well, you know, what's old is new again, so musket's got to be cool. <laughs> yeah, cool, we, we've got to make it cool. One of the problems <laughs> is that because it is a small market, mm. um, we have to, um, education of people is the difficult one, mm -hmm. to get people to know when to drink it, mm -hmm. how to drink it, etc., and just make sure that we um, we can lift these wines out, out from where they are at the moment mm -hmm. and start um, start drinking them more. Yeah, and you're, you're making Rutherglen the musket centre of the world. Yeah, the people coming into Australia these days is, is enormous. Yeah. So if we can get increase our tourism, mm. that's going to be good for the, the regional winemakers. Well, it's a beautiful part of the world, so I'm yeah. sure you'll get an increase here, for sure. Mm. We hope. Yes. Well, I, you know what? I think it's time for me to taste some of those muskets and topakes. What do you reckon? Good idea. Mm.